Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today's webinar. Uh, it is a webinar co-organized by ENQA and the Enignatic Network. My name is Elena Kerlan, and I am a Senior Policy and Project Coordinator at ENQA. Uh, today, I will co-chair this webinar together with Chiara Finocchetti, the uh, Enignatic Network President. Um, we will discuss today, as you know, about some models and uh, opportunities for cooperation between quality assurance agencies and Enignatics. And uh, the idea for this webinar actually comes from the sessions at the ENQA General Assembly 2023 that explored in some of the sessions the latest policy developments uh, related to recognition and the practical links between quality assurance and recognition. Um, well, we know that quality assurance agencies and enigmatics have been collaborating on various topics of common interest. And uh, a good example of uh, this collaboration was uh, the Lireka project, uh, which ended in 2019 and which proposed practical recommendations for integrating academic recognition and quality assurance. So we are pretty sure this collaboration uh, will continue. Uh, and so before we uh, start and delve in, in the today's topic, uh, I would like just to share a couple of technicalities. So as you already do very well, please uh, use the uh, chat function, so to greet each other, to share thoughts, to share remarks, to address questions to um, uh, if they are relate to um, uh, technicalities. But if you have questions to the speakers that you'd like us to uh, take up in the discussion part, please add those under the Q&A tab. We will do our best with Chiara to uh, tackle those questions, but of course it uh, depends on the time we will have. Uh, as you may notice, the webinar is recorded and the recording uh, together with the presentations will be uh, shared and posted on Enqua's website after the uh, webinar is over. So you'll have still access to that. With this being covered, I have the pleasure to uh, give uh, the floor now to Chiara. Thanks, Elena. And uh, on behalf of the Enic Narek, I would like also to thank uh, ENCA for having taken the lead uh, and the initiative on this, uh, uh, of the co-organization of this webinar, and also for having taken the big part of the work. So thanks uh, for this. As Elena already said, this is an important topic for us, this collaboration, it's uh, key. Uh, has been part of the ENCA General Assembly uh, last year, will be part of the next uh, annual meeting of uh, uh, the two networks, of ENIC and NARC networks, uh, that will be in June. So it's an ongoing uh, uh, dialogue that we have, and we hope this uh, uh, webinar will be another occasion to strengthen uh, our cooperation. Uh, as we know, also from the recognition perspective, it is important that all actors in a clear division of tasks and uh, responsibilities cooperate to ensure efficient and effective recognition flow. And cooperation between QA agency and uh, ENIC centers is an important part of this, uh, of this pro process. So now we would like to ask uh, to three speakers. We have uh, three colleagues that accepted to be part of this dialogue today with us. So I would like uh, to start with the first speaker and I'm glad to give the floor to Andrina Wefer, uh, who is Head of International Mobility and Prior Learning at QQR, Equality and Qualifications Ireland. So Andrina, glad to give you the floor. Good morning. Oops, am I there? I'm here somewhere, <laughs> it's coming, I'm sure. Thank you very much. And it's such a pleasure to be here. Um, and, and truly, I say that I, I know that a, a colleague from um, University College Cork once said that diversity begets stability. And I think that's really the truth among the enigmatic networks. We, we are a very diverse um, set of, of approaches, I suppose, to, to driving forward recognition and very much based on um, very much based on on uh, quality assurance. In, in the case of QQI, the NARIC 
Ireland is is homed within QQI. So so QQI is a quality assurance agency and a qualifications authority is our home. It's where we it's where we live and dwell and thrive. Um, so moving to the next slide, please. Um, there there is a, a saying in Ireland that uh, we're an island an island people and Erskal of Arran um, we live in each other's shelter. And I think it's also true of us as, as Europe, as Europeans, as a community of practice, we live in each other's shelter. We thrive only because of the emphasis on our, our shared um, community, our shared uh, quality, I suppose, and our shared our shared values. I had an experience recently in, in, a, in, in a very large um, European airport where, where my Irish passport was not recognised and I was incandescent, let us say, to be to be required to join a particular queue of those who, whose uh, membership of the European Union is no longer um, practised. And uh, it, it, did, it did not bode well when I when I actually got to the, the particular desk. And it really made me think about what it is um, to, to be a recognised member of the European Union and, and why that what what it is about a passport that helps us to to move freely and what we're trying to do in fact in in no sorry back a slide what what it is to be as part of the the European Union in general so so when we're trying to establish a European higher education area we're really reliant on the values and the things that drive um behind that and this this engagement today is very much part of of a way of exploring some of that so the quality assurance of recognition processes the things that support recognition of qualifications that give credibility to the recognition of the systems that lead to qualifications, including the periods of learning for our, in our case, across a distributed recognition service. And I think one of the things for, for QQI, the, the added value of, of sharing NARIC um, within um, a, a quality assurance agency, and I think this is also the case for some of my colleagues here on the call, um, it is, is also this service orientation where we're directly dealing with the public, with individuals. And my, my colleagues in, in our, our NARIC office would say the same thing, for, where we actually deal with where recognition really matters for an individual. And we bring that then, that perspective also to the, the focus on the system, how, how to actually enhance a quality assurance system and the, the recognition processes within that system as a whole. So today we're going to look a little bit about the particularities um, within our, our own environment here in Ireland, the advantages and the challenges, and then how we can perhaps en enhance the cooperation acro across the community as a whole. Next slide, please. In terms of um, the particularities in Ireland, Home Sweet Home, QQI, for, since 2012, uh, as you know, an organisation that inherited um, a, a lot of predecessor organisations has has driven for the last um, over a decade now um, in, in terms of building a, a really strong culture and ecosystem of, of quality assurance where, where obviously it's provider owned, it promote, promotes accountability and uh, trust in credible qualifications so that they can be recognised nationally and internationally as something that's very precious and very much valued. And it, it, it subject itself to peer review as a quality assurance organization, so uh, agency, so that the circle turns fu full circle. But it's this it's this focus on a systematic, holistic culture of quality assurance. It's ongoing. It's a process of continuous monitoring, evaluating, maintaining and enhancing the quality of systems. We also are home um, to to the the national framework of qualifications, and and it is for us a a, a comprehensive, regulated system and organising feature of our entire education and training system, and it makes no sense, of course, without quality assurance. It's it, it this is this is chicken and and eggs, and at, at the introduction there, Chiara was talking about. The, the practical links between quality assurance and and recognition in in our view and in our in in that of our our, our stakeholders the people we work with every day uh, across the system across a distributed recognition system we're very very aware that one thing leans on the other and we're only as strong Pori could often say this our, our chief executive we're only as strong as our weakest link um, so qualifications that are included in our national framework are, are published on the Irish Register of Qualifications, which is an incredibly important regulatory tool. And we, we are also, as an organisation, the designated national contact point for the EQF, uh, the National European the National Europass Centre and home, of course, to <laughs> NARIC Ireland. Otherwise, we wouldn't be here today. Next slide. 
Um, so, so those are our, our peculiarities, if you like. Our, 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 our passport, which I, I think is a, a, an object are in itself, a very beautiful artifact, um, like most passports, has this beautiful phrase um, in, inside it where, where the Minister for Foreign Affairs and Trade of Ireland requests all to whom it may concern to allow the bearer or citizen of Ireland to pass freely and without hindrance and to afford the bearer all necessary assistance and protection. And in the same way <clears throat> as an Arix, we, we work to provide that same recognition so that somebody with a particular qualification can pass freely and without hindrance. And the first thing we look to frequently is qualifications, frameworks and quality assurance systems. We can't advise on recognition without that um, cooperation and without that authoritative information. So what Narek Ireland does and what my, my colleagues um, work so very, very hard to do is to provide authoritative advice on online and in, in the shape of comparability statements. We provide links to the levels of the Irish National Framework and to an award type where possible and additional links to information of interest on the education systems. Of course, what is that information of interest nationally? Naturally, it's information around qualifications, frameworks and the qualification quality assurance systems. And we collaborate with those who make recognition decisions. Who are they? Those are the um, universities, the higher education institutions, um, sometimes employers, um, you know, the, the various people who have responsibility for making the re recognition decisions, professional bodies and so on. The internal quality assurance engagements, uh, quality assurance engagement across QQI, and this is part of being part of a bigger organization. So at process level, obviously, um, we're, we're accountable for for the standard things in terms of system level oversight and accountability. And that's very systematic, as you can imagine, within an organization like QQI. Um, and then at process level, we have standard operating procedures and there's collaborative processes for credential evaluation, much as there are across the, the NARIC network. So very systematic work there through through the, the engagement of my colleagues with queries and with the publication of the comparability statements. They don't just arrive out of the blue and get um, published overnight. There, there's very systematic work behind that in terms of research and engagement. Um, across the team. External engagement for NARIC Ireland, as with all the NIC NARIC network, it's a very robust um, uh, network with, with intense quality assurance work. And again, you'll hear more about this later, but there's a peer evaluation system and uh, infrastructure around that, and we've participated in that fully. Um, the recommendations that come out of the external peer review um, have, in, in, our, in our case, um, been in concert with the strategic direction in QQ and we've worked and are working indeed to develop those and to implement them more fully um, and have been incredibly helpful as external peer review tends to be. Um, and, and again, a tribute to my colleagues for their, their deep engagement um, with those recommendations and for the ongoing progress in, in um, developing them further. And, and being part of a live and thriving network, I think, gives us an opportunity to do very deep work through thematic meetings, through the webinars, through the thematic peer group meetings of the Bologna process and through the peer learning activities which support um, reflective practice. I, I would say a word in terms of the project work that we do um, this gives us a chance to interrogate further in terms of the, the in, in, on a very deep level um, the, the work that is, is it, I suppose, the, the guidelines and so on that come out through the Bologna process and through other um, European recommendations. And sometimes the work is very um, complex and um, that peer to peer work across different jurisdictions and across different systems it helps us to understand each other's quality assurance challenges and each other's quality assurance cultures. And that, again, is really important in helping us to be sensitive to um, the approaches that are taken in different jurisdictions and the challenges therein. And again, in terms of enabling people to pass freely and without hindrance and to provide the necessary supports um, the necessary assistance and protection for for our learners and for knowledge for the development of new knowledge is is a really really important part of all of this. So QQI quality assurance policy and the holistic monitoring um, that goes on through the quality assurance work of QQI that many of you from the um, NQIP perspective are very familiar with um, supports recognition and the implementation of the, the LRC, the Lisbon Recognition Convention, our core quality assurance guidelines um, drives all the time for the fair recognition of qualifications and periods of study and um, the appropriate recognition procedures in line with European recognition principles and so on. And that works, um, you know, 
throughout and then is 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 monitored. And um, so if we move on to the next slide without without laboring this, but it is it is bedded through the the entire um approach the QQI would take. There's very much as as you know of QQI very much an external orientation, indeed a global orientation in many respects. In in Irish culture and indeed in Celtic culture, so many of, of you um who are of Celtic origin or, or who have Celtic heritage will recognize um that a chieftain in Irish culture was known by the, the size of his cauldron by his capacity um to to um entertain and to provide hospitality. And again our, our global orientation, our capacity to work with to work internationally is incredibly important for us. Um, not only just for our economy, but also for our, our culture and for our, our international development, our international orientation. So it is no surprise that um, again that um, our director Jim Murray, Dr. Jim Murray, is uh, responsible for introducing the international education mark and is is leading out on that this year um or with our along obviously with our government and um, the code of practice on un strongly underscores comprehensive engagement uh, embedding implementation and monitoring of the LRC and subsidiary texts and supports engagement with the promotion and qualification of recognition um including the recognition of awards and previous learning for for international learners and this brings um this engagement with international learners and international practice to a whole new level and many of our um thanks Chiara many of our our um universities and so on are, are digging very deep in, in their understanding of how they're actually doing on that. So strengthened in systematic internal co collaboration also is a big part of our, our quality assurance work and then external qualification collaboration through the implementation of the the um, IEM again that's deepening the, the quality assurance work there the response to recognition in emergency situations again we've we've gone farther and farther into that work including in collaboration with the Council of Europe through the EQPR so the engagement I think across if we move to the next slide please the engagement across the the um the entire um work of being part of the Enigmatic network, I think, and part of the systems of of recognition has brought us um, an incredible set of opportunities to support recognition, to to enable people to pass freely without hindrance, and to afford them all the necessary assistance and protection. But this is entirely reliant on strong processes of of collaboration and strong processes of. Uh, quality assurance and access to the very best of quality assurance um, uh, information. In terms of opportunities for enhancing co cooperation and communication, information exchange, I think debates like today or conversations like today are actually really, really important. It is difficult to keep um, track of everything and to understand it in a way that is succinct and easy to explain. I think the intersectional updates at the thematic peer group meetings are really, really important and it would be wonderful to be able to pull these together, including with the work of, of ENQA, um, to, to, so that we could dig into these in ways that are provide us with very clear lines um, and to, to follow those through and establish the threads and pursue them longitudinally in, in specific directions. Thanks a million for this opportunity. It's been great. Thanks a lot, Andrina. Thanks a lot for your rich uh, uh, presentation and also for uh, uh, reminding us uh, one of the key objectives of our cooperation that is supporting mobility of graduates with the nice metaphor of uh, nice metaphor of uh, passport. I see that in the chat there are no immediate uh, questions. I remind you to feel free to post a question or comment in the chat. So if there are no immediate questions for Andrina, then um, I'm glad to uh, move uh, in our conversation to Lithuania, and I'm glad to invite uh, the next speaker, uh, Christina Sutkute, uh, who is Information and Assessment Office Officer at Center for Quality Assessment in Higher Education. So, um, Christina, over to you. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Chiara. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm really glad for this opportunity uh, to present uh, the Lithuanian case and how the Lithuanian Quality Assurance uh, Agency and the Enoch Narek Center cooperate. So first of all, I have very little time, only 10 minutes <laughs> to talk about this. So I wanted to say that my uh, presentation will focus on the QA agency and the Enoch Narek, but of course, another important actor that is there within the system and that uh, shapes uh, our activities is of course, the higher education institutions. A lot of the 
this is aimed at their support and of course holders of foreign qualifications and learners seeking recognition so of course the top the topics where we co cooperate most are uh, recognition however i i would like to stress that in addition to recognition there's also a lot of value in general exchange of knowledge and information um, to kind of improve our processes and to even foster innovation and foster change within our systems so let's take a look at how lithuania does this I am from SKVC, so this is an organization. We say that we stand on two different legs. <laughs> so we are the Quality Assurance Agency as well as the, the Lithuanian Enoch Naric Office. So this is two, two kind of important parts of our identity. And it would seem that it's, uh, it's kind of, it's very natural that we do cooperate. And in fact, yes, uh, we uh, uh, cooperate from the very beginning, at first, uh, very informally, uh, through conversations, through kind of uh, learning from each other, helping each other. But uh, I, would, I would say that, especially after the Lareka project, which has already been mentioned, uh, we have taken our cooperation to kind of another level, a more standardized, I would say, level, more systematic. And uh, this does not come naturally because our processes can just run separate <laughs> from each other uh, without a really kind of a standardized meeting points. But I think we, uh, the Lareka project also kind of inspired us to take a look at our processes and to see where we could help each other. So um, let's start with the Enoch Narek office and a couple of words about me as well, because for a long time I was part of the Enoch Narek office, part of the agency. And just over a year ago, I moved to the quality assurance part. So it's kind of I'm also an example of this cooperation and kind of learning from each other. Uh, so first of all, let's take a look at the Enoch Naric office. So the Lithuanian Enoch Naric office, these are the main activities of the office. And I would say that uh, the Lithuanian Enoch Naric office cooperates very closely with higher education institutions. This is partly due to our system, uh, because for a long time we had a centralized system of recognition. And in 2012, we started to get gradually decentralize it, but the Enoch Naric office really helped higher education institutions establish these processes, developed a lot of tools and resources to help them do that. And another part of this, which is not common to all Enoch Naric offices, was a, a, a certain amount of kind of monitoring or even oversight of recognition decisions made by higher education institutions. So at the moment, I think we have a complete, almost completely de, fa de facto decentralized system, but we have an element that remains. Uh, uh, we have something that we call annual reports, annual recognition reports. This is what the Enoch Naric office kind of uh, gathers data on recognition annually. Before that, this data was submitted by higher education institution. Now this, uh, we rely on the data that is available in registers and provides kind of an overview of the state of recognition uh, for that year, what are the good practices, what are the issues, what, uh, what requires uh, atten our attention as a system and so on. So this is something I would say peculiar to, to us, to our system. And uh, now a couple of words about the QA part of SKVC. Uh, so we have three main processes. Uh, aimed at external quality assurance. So this is institutional review and evaluation of uh, clusters of programs within a specific field. So we call this study field evaluation. And we also have a system of national indicators that are being monitored annually. Uh, and uh, um, I would say that recognition is really included and embedded into institutional review because it is expected that recognition is part of internal quality assurance within higher education institutions. And it's also being considered or looked at during uh, the evaluation of study fields 
as part of student admission and support. So this is something that the uh, uh, panels that evaluate fields or uh, study fields or institutions take into consideration and, and take a look at. It is not part of uh, monitoring on, of indicators. And I would say that when we talk about monitoring of certain indicators, we don't have specific national benchmarks that an institution or a program has to meet. It's just to see whether there's extreme fluctuations within uh, certain numbers. So these are, this is a very brief, brief overview of the activities of the Enoch Narek office and the QA agency. So uh, the next slide is where do we meet? <laughs> where do we meet as an Enoch Narek office and the QA agency? And we meet, I would say, on several levels within our internal processes. Uh, and this is something that comes most naturally, and this is something that we've uh, been, uh, I mean, living with as part of the same agency for quite a long time. So we consult each other quite a lot and we work with each other quite a lot. Some of the examples uh, I provided here on the slide are, for example, when the Quality Assurance Agency selects foreign experts for external reviews, sometimes they would consult our Enoch Narek office regarding the state of their home institutions, if there are any uh, questions. Also, we cooperate when it comes to evaluation of joint programs. So the Enoch Narek office can provide information to the Quality Assurance Agency on the status of uh, uh, partners and the status of the qualifications that are awarded after completion of joint programs. When, uh, when the standards and indicators were developed for external quality assurance processes, I remember this, the Enoch Narek office was also consulted how these could be best reflected to ensure that the, uh, the requirements of the Lisbon Recognition Convention uh, are met. And, but of course, the next step for us, and this is the step that I would say is more standardized, more formalized, requires kind of a bit of review of processes, is co collaborating on those external processes. So uh, I also provided some examples. So uh, for example, during an institutional, uh, uh, during institutional reviews, there's a profile of institution prepared based on various data uh, from registers. And as part of this institutional profile, the Enoch Narek office also provides some information from these uh, annual recognition reviews regarding the status of recognition, Right, uh, and regarding some numbers uh, related to recognition and so on. So this is kind of formal, uh, quite, quite a formalized point of where the Enoch Narek and the Quality Assurance Agency meets and kind of feeds into each other. Another one is that uh, when the panels provide some recommendations, if they kind of, if we can see that they relate to, might relate to some systemic issues when it comes to recognition, this, this is something that we bring attention to the Enoch Narek office, and this is something that they can take on board and uh, consider when they develop tools or think of events or, or training seminars and so on. And of course, we do... Um, communicate on something that I call systemic level. So we do have common projects, common activities and seminars. This is our knowledge sharing, kind of sharing of information to foster innovation, to drive innovation. So uh, the example was the Lereca project, which is what was already mentioned. We also work together on the providing recommendations of um, uh, uh, introducing micro-credentials into the Lithuanian system of education. Last year, we had an event on level five qualifications where both the Quality Assurance Agency and the Enoch Narek office took part in. So uh, we see kind of more and more uh, common activities while the collaboration was really more on the informal level. Now it's transitioning to be more kind of standardized, more, more and more systemic. So what are the outcomes of this cooperation? Do we see any effect uh, in this? 
I would say that uh, we complement each other quite well, and uh, it's uh, it, we have a potential for a, a co cohesive and complementing system of recognition. So as I said, our processes feed into each other, and we kind of help each other and support uh, higher education institutions in these activities. And I would say that while Enoch Narek Office is really aims to support like uh, and to provide very practical tools for higher education institutions, recommendation databases, and so on, the quality assurance agency and the quality assurance processes really don't go into such details, but they can really feed in and to identify good practices or issues on institutional or system level. And this is just an example of something that we saw in Lithuania when it comes to recognition. So what are the good things and what are the issues that we see? But this is very specific to us. Now, uh, impact and future considerations. So what was the impact of our collaboration? I would say that um, uh, the quality assurance processes and uh, the qu uh, quality assurance of recognition allows also uh, higher education institutions to reflect on this as well, to reflect on this in, in a very systematic way and to kind of bring uh, recognition into focus. Um, and we see uh, kind of a possibility for future even closer cooperation because we see kind of uh, topics that arise and that uh, really connect our activities together the INIC-NARIC office and the quality assurance agency, such as micro-credentials, European degrees, and so on. But another tool that we could adv uh, take advantage of, I think greater impact could require a theme-based approach, such as thematic analysis of recognition, or even making recognition uh, as part of various codes of internalization, internationalization that a lot of countries have. So thank you. This was a very brief overview. Uh, thank you very much. And Chiara, back to you. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, Christina, also to you for this uh, presentation, rich of input and experience, I will say. And uh, we do have a question for you, Christina, from Peter Levente Lakatos. What are the challenges of combining the evaluator and the advisor roles? And how can you deal with them? So I guess it's a question on your uh, uh, expertise both uh, in recognition and in QA. So if you can provide a very quick uh, answer, Christina. <laughs> it's a difficult oh, question, thank you. <laughs> uh, thank you for this. Yes, yeah, so when it comes to the activities of the Enoch Naric office, we were always kind of, uh, we, for a long time, we were part of the process, a centralized system. So we were really part of the decision making. Now we're gradually kind of stepping away and almost stepped away from this. So in most cases, we provide recommendations. And when it comes to these annual annual reviews, annual recognition reports. <laughs> this is something that we've been mandated by the ministry. I think they are also rec more recommendatory in nature and uh, they kind of only identify kind of systemic issues that we as a system could work on. When it comes to external quality assurance as well, it's up to the um, external experts, to the panel of experts to see how this works and to kind of provide their feedback. We as a quality assurance agency, we only coordinate the process. So uh, we, uh, I think our role is uh, more or less advisory in, in, both, in both cases. So thank you, but that's an excellent question. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Thank, thanks a lot, Christine, also for, also for your concise uh, uh, answer to not an easy or immediate question. So thanks again to Christina, and uh, we are glad now to move uh, to our next speaker, and we move to the Netherlands. And uh, I'm glad to invite to, the, uh, to take the floor Bas Begevis, who is team coordinator and policy officer in international recognition at NAFIC. So Bas, over to you. Yes, <clears throat> thank you, Chiara, um, and thank you for the invitation to uh, to do this presentation here. I think it's really very useful to uh, 
to have strong links between um, quality assurance and uh, recognition organizations. So I think this is uh, very welcome. Uh, well, let me start with a little bit of history. Uh, when I got this invitation, I remembered that uh, more than six years ago, there was um, uh, an ENQA workshop in, uh, in Dublin, uh, where also this theme uh, was on the agenda. And I did a presentation together with my colleague, uh, Mark Frederiks from the Dutch Flemish Accreditation Organization. It was before Corona, so it was all real life. And uh, then we presented together uh, the, the cooperation between uh, NVAO and Navix. So that was a very uh, interesting meeting. I hope that I'm not the only one present today that was at that meeting, but it was a long time ago. So maybe I am uh, the only one. Um, I, I even could use some of the slides we then uh, produced <laughs> six years ago. Of course, I had to do uh, many updates, but um, uh, the cooperation with, between us uh, was strong then, and uh, I think is st still strong uh, nowadays. So, um, oh yeah, and the other interesting thing to note here is uh, the cooperation model is different from the, from the previous two uh, speakers and situations because we are two completely separate uh, organizations. Um, and then we, uh, yeah, we are completely independent from each other. So that's a different situation. So we really have to, to, uh, to find each other and to, uh, to, uh, in order to cooperate. Next slide, please. Uh, I don't see it yet, but is, is the next slide already up? Yes, Bas. Yes, it is. Oh. oh, I can't see it. <laughs> okay. Well, I have it in front of me, so I'll, I'll continue then. Um, the Dutch in uh, is part of NAVIC in the Netherlands, which is an, uh, an uh, independent foundation. And uh, our big uh, theme is uh, internationalization in education. So we have many different teams working on, on that subject. And the Dutch Enigmeric, in fact, is, is only uh, one of those teams. Uh, we are the International Recognition Department. Uh, we have been um, uh, appointed as an Enigmeric already long ago, long time ago. But we only have a legal task in this uh, since uh, October 22. So that's only uh, one and a half year ago. It's a new situation for us. It's very good because we have a, a more clear position now in the in the Dutch uh, education system, and we also have um, much closer um, cooperation with the Ministry of Education. So that's uh, that's very good news for us. We don't have a lot of the other functionalities uh, like the one that uh, Andrea presented, the QQI in Ireland has really a very good position in this and having so many national and European uh, tasks. But we are mainly the INICNARIC and then we are also the uh, National Assistance Center for the European Directive on Professional Recognition. Um, we produce a lot of written evaluations, mainly for the Dutch higher education institutions, but also for the government, employers, professional bodies, individuals, and we really broadened our uh, uh, our client base in the last 10 or 20 years. It used to be mainly the higher education institutions, but nowadays the uh, the evaluations that we make, which are uh, which is advice, and there are no binding decisions, are going to uh, to many stakeholders uh, in the Netherlands. And in the picture, you see. Um, some um, other activities that are also part of our daily work, just as an example, in the checking uh, original documents, we are applying ultraviolet and infrared techniques and microscopes. And so uh, sometimes we are just uh, doing a lot of investigations in, uh, in documents. Uh, next slide, please. We do a lot of uh, information pro provision as well. Uh, we have uh, exactly 100 descriptions of foreign education systems on our website in Dutch and English. So uh, they're completely free to, to use. And we also make comparisons to, uh, 
to Dutch qualifications. So you can also consider it to be a, a, an example of automatic recognition applied to, uh, to many uh, countries uh, worldwide, uh, in fact. Um, we do also training on recognition. We give, give many webinars, uh, usually in, in the Netherlands, but also international webinars centered around certain themes or countries or, uh, or on the, the Lisbon Recognition Convention and how to uh, apply it. And we, um, we organize and um, initiate many um, Erasmus Plus projects on, uh, on recognition. We usually do this together with many of our uh, Inignaric colleagues. Uh, so we also have some of the projects where we work together with Ireland and with Italy and with Lithuania, just to name some of the people who are uh, present in this presentation. Um, and this is really um, one of our big um, activities that we uh, are really put a, a lot of uh, effort into. Uh, you can see um, some of the examples uh, in the pictures. There's the ear manual, which is uh, existing already for more than uh, 10 years. Um, it was even um, endorsed in one of the Bologna communiques as good practice in, in recognition. And last year we updated it. So we now have the ear manual 2023. Um, and one of the other recent publications was the rise and recognition of micro credentials where we also with an international team of experts uh, gave some uh, recommendations on the, on the recognition of this new form of uh, uh, education and qualifications. Uh, next slide, please. So how do we keep into contact between the, the, the Dutch Flemish accreditation organization and NAVIC? Well, um, it's very good that we are very close together uh, in The Hague. So our offices are really located uh, five minutes walk, walking distance from each other, as you can see on this map. And it's also very convenient that the, the, our prime minister, the PM, and the king are also in walking distance from our offices. So you can see that we can, uh, in, within one hour, we can, uh, we can walk through to all of these offices, do our business and uh, help uh, quality assurance and uh, recognition uh, to the next level. This also helps, um, for instance, when we have uh, foreign delegations coming to either the NVAO or to NAVIC, and then sometimes we can combine our visits and do a, a very simple walk through the nice surroundings of The Hague. And uh, yeah, then we can also uh, train each other's uh, delegations in recognition or quality assurance. Uh, next slide, please. Well, in our context, um, what I didn't uh, put in, in the slide is that there's also a kind of information level contact that if our uh, credential evaluators uh, need some information on the uh, accreditation status of uh, certain programs, or institutions uh, in the Netherlands. Of course, we can always uh, ask our colleagues at NVAO. And if they want to know some things about recognition, they, uh, they know how to uh, find us. But um, let's say more at the policy level, we uh, organize regular meetings on the national recognition policy. And then we uh, invite uh, also the Ministry of Education. Um, we try to do this uh, at least four times a year. These are very useful uh, meetings for all of us, I think. Um, we also meet each other in national Bologna meetings. Uh, these are organized by the uh, Ministry of Education. And we will also meet the policy uh, officers of, uh, uh, of NVAO. Uh, and there's a really a long tradition of uh, working in each other's uh, projects. So some of them are organized by uh, NVRO, some by uh, the uh, European Council of Accreditation, and some of them are organized by us. And there's a long list of names here. Um, and some of them are quite famous for having uh, originated, for instance, the, the joint approach in, uh, in accreditation of, uh, of joint programs. 
And uh, another one is very famous, and I will come back to that. It's called the Square Project. It's very famous in the enigmatic uh, world. Uh, next slide, please. And what we also do is uh, give presentations at each other's webinars and seminars. So some recent uh, examples are uh, Nuffic webinars on automatic recognition, where the expert from NVAO joined in. And I went uh, last year to NVAO to a seminar to present on micro-credentials. Next slide, please. Um, but the main uh, project that we worked on together is the it was the Square project, where we developed a quality assurance system for the recognition networks. So uh, here the input of the NVAO is very important. They uh, taught us how to... Uh, to work with standards and guidelines. And we produce six standards and guidelines for the recognition networks. And since that time, and that's already you know, uh, also around 10 years ago, there's a series of projects that um, organizes the self-evaluation and peer review activities of the ENIGNERICS. And um, it's also uh, very well represented on our uh, Enigneric website, the one, uh, the joint Enigneric website. So you can see some uh, some pictures and text here. There's a picture from the the May July uh, Enigneric peer review tour where you can see a lot of arrows all across Europe, going from one country to the, to the next. Um, and even as of speaking, we are uh, preparing the next uh, rounds of uh, peer reviews, and it's organized uh, at the moment by. Uh, Chimea and Nafik in our uh, project called the Technical Support Team, which is uh, initiated by, uh, by Chimea, by Chiara. So we are still working with, with this system. And I think more than 25 countries have already participated over the years, uh, one form or the other. So uh, doing the self-evaluations and then um, doing the peer reviews and being peer reviewed ourselves and I can really say this is a very uh, interesting and useful um, activity for the enigmatic networks. So that's it from my side. Um, thank you for your attention. Thanks a lot, Bas. Thanks for this uh, presentation. And thanks also for reminding us that this is a long uh, cooperation. And uh, thanks also for uh, the role that NAFIC played in this uh, in uh, uh, as a long uh, tradition in this uh, UAE part. So thanks to Bas once again, and I'm glad now to give uh, immediately the, fo the floor to Elena for the discussion part. So over to you, Elena. Thank you very much, Chiara. And of course, uh, uh, special thanks goes to our speakers for indeed very interesting cases. I invite the speakers on the floor, so to say. So please turn on your cameras because now is the moment we will I uh, have a, a little discussion, which I hope uh, will be interesting for all of us. Um, uh, before I go to the questions from uh, the attendees, I have a question that I would like to, to um, ask you all. So uh, we have these uh, cases, interesting cases of collaboration, which you described. Uh, but what, in your opinion, are the main hindrances to sound collaboration between quality assurance agencies and enigmatic centers, centers and how these could be uh, overcome. Uh, of course, you already gave um, um, answer uh, to the second question, but if you have some other ideas, those will be welcome. So please, who will answer first to, to this question? Christina, please. Yes, I think we have a lot of um, what I would say points of uh, uh, where our activities connect. So we have a lot of those points and we are not fully taking advantage of e each other's potential. <laughs> so I think <laughs> we need to kind of uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, take a moment to find these uh, points where we connect and where we can empower each other and help each other and share our knowledge and information. So just the reason, because we're so used to running these processes on, on our own separately. <laughs> so just... Uh, 
just to take a break, to take a breather, to talk to each other, to discuss with each other, and then to see how we best can uh, enrich and support uh, uh, each other. Oh, thank you very much, Christina. And I could see both Bas and Adriana noting <laughs> while you were giving the answer. Uh, do you have anything to add, um, Adriana Bas? Yes, please go ahead, Bas. Yeah, for a while, uh, it worked quite well uh, with our regular meetings, which we organized ourselves. So we have very good uh, relationships with the policy officers. It, it, it still works well, but even if you uh, meet every three months or so, in some cases, you're simply too late. Uh, some of the developments are very quick. We can see some uh, recent, recent developments from the European uh, Commission, for instance, on the, proposal on the quality assurance and recognition system. Well, you, even here now you have it in one title, there's a proposal on both these asp aspects. Um, but then you have to react very quickly and um, give some feedback to, to your ministry. And uh, yeah, um, we, we, we felt really uh, not well prepared for that. So yeah, I, I don't know really the answer, but looking a little bit ahead, see what's coming, and then, <laughs> then do your planning. That might be very helpful so that you're not always uh, too late. I mean, there's of course still a lot of time for us to, to reflect on the new proposals and to work with it and to have meetings on it. But sometimes you really feel um, a little bit too slow compared to the developments. Oh, thank you very much, Bas. Uh, Adriana? Yeah, I think, I, I, I guess all of this is building one on one on another and one of the phrases we hear an awful lot about in recognition circles is is mutual trust um and the whole area of quality assurance also rests on trust and mutual trust it is a busy space both quality assurance and also and even looking at the questions in the chat development is happening very quickly and it's also this is also, as Baz indicated, a very complex space. Work with the Commission, work with the Council of Europe, work with as we try to regularize and to provide structures and systems um, often across different institutions. And by that, I mean sort of pillar institutions like UNESCO, the Council of Europe, um, Bologna, you know, the, the various pillar institutions and trying to keep track of that is tricky. Um, and we're also working as a, as a community, as a recognition community with uh, the Global Recognition Convention, with the Lisbon Recognition Convention, you know, and, and so these intersections are, are, are complex, but also for our, the institutions with whom we work, they're also working in complex spaces. Um, and and it, I think this is difficult and exactly as Baz said, sometimes the train has left the station by the time we get there and we're there waving our ticket on the platform while it's choked out. And they're, they're also autonomous institutions. Um, so they may make choices um, and, and interpretations and decisions that, you know, we might be left thinking, OK, um, how does that square with? And conversations and building, building this alignment takes time. So I, I think that, you know, every, every recommendation you go back to says the same thing. Give more resources to the enigmatics. Um, you know, and, and but there's only so often that you can say that and there are only so many resources. Um, so I, I think I think this is complex. We, we kind of have to look to see what are the really big notes um, and how do we get behind those in a way that really does support this trust? Indeed. Indeed. And I think that goes also well with what Christina said, to, to actually define these common points and then sit, reflect, look back, look at the whole picture uh, and uh, take uh, action. Um, actually related to also what uh, Bas mentioned about, uh, there is a um, uh, question in the Q&A. Uh, so it is about how do you envisage the evolution, the evolution of collaboration between QA agencies and enigmatic centers in light of the recent European Commission's higher education package. So this is kind of a question that looks already ahead 
uh, on the uh, issues that you already uh, touched upon. So please, who, who wants to reflect a little bit on uh, future? Christina, please. <laughs> Yes, I, I can just start, uh, uh, and of course my colleagues will, will add on, as Andrea has said. Uh, yes, I think we're, we're more and more dependent on each other, and we, we have to rely on each other more and more. For example, just an example, automatic recognition does not work without uh, close cooperation and tools uh, from quality assurance agencies, you know, so this just uh, drives us <laughs> closer and closer together. We just have to kind of uh, because we will we, we become more and more reliant on each other and require each other's help to kind of run our processes smoothly and to keep our systems uh, up to date and working and meeting the needs uh, of our stakeholders so this is just a short intervention yeah thank you so much uh, and Abbas please uh, yes I, uh, I agree with uh, Christina um, well, um, the, the good thing is, at least from uh, from our point of view, that, um, we are always uh, on, on the same uh, line with our colleagues from uh, from accreditation quality assurance. So uh, every time we meet and, uh, and talk these things through, it can be micro credentials, it can be automatic recognition, it can be the new developments uh, from the uh, the recommendations from the European Commission. We, we never have any real uh, issues or uh, different points of view. Um, it's all in line with what has been started with the Bologna process, which is now also being taken up by the European Commission. And I think it's a very good thing. So when most of these things are really aligned and even the, all of the Bologna tools, when applied well, they also work well, the ECTS system or the uh, EQ, EQF which was also mentioned uh, today. And then also how uh, the quality assurance is organized and how people from recognition can use that. There is there's no, um, yeah, there, there are no problems there. So we, uh, we can always work it out. And that's of course a very good starting point to, to increase our cooperation and, uh, and get together a bit quicker and, uh, and decide perhaps a bit more, more quicker on, uh, on future uh, policy. But we have a very good uh, field to start from. Indeed. Thank you very much, Bas. And Adriana, and uh, then uh, I'm afraid we won't be able to take more questions. Please, Adriana. Okay, we're, we're doing a lot of work because I, I see the one on micro credentials keeps popping up when someone is looking for an answer. We're doing an awful lot of work uh, with colleagues uh, led by Latvia um, in, in this field. And I, I know Bas is also doing work and we're, we're engaged in that as well. The, the learning, I think, for us is that this is really complex and it, in it and it's diverse. I know I keep going back to the complexity of things um, and it's as you unpick things. Um, it sounds wonderfully simple in original in or, original and initial con concept. And often it is and good ideas are. But when you actually unpick them, there are side things that need to be in place for something to work well. And I think the same in relation to the, the higher education package um, makes an awful lot of sense for us as a European region. Um, it makes an awful lot of sense for our young people who are ambitious and curious and, you know, uh, and, and want to travel and, you know, and deserve these opportunities. And in fact, you know, as, as knowledge travels, this is how this works. Um, but there are complexities in it. And, you know, so I think it, it, in, in fairness to quality assurance, we need time to work these out. Um, and, and I think the other thing I keep going back to every time career guidance, guidance for, for young people is so important. And we make assumptions that everybody knows these things and that everybody knows how to use AI and knows how to work their way around information systems and all the rest of it. Um, the experience is often not quite that. And I think, you know, we need to look also to to supports for young people um, as they do those things. And indeed, not always to the assumption that it is young people who will avail of these things. Um, you know, so I think a, a, there's, a, there's a lot of parallel work that has to be done to really support quality in the engagement in this. And, and I'm very curious about that, about how we can best drive that to make sure that recognition really does work and does deliver what, what we want it to do to afford every assistance. Um, that, that that's really a very big part of, of all of this. 
I think Adriana, you, you had such a good message there to have young people's interest at heart of all what we do. That's actually our aim. And I think that has to be always something we keep in mind. And with this nice message, I would like to also underline that I think these conversations are so useful to share and to, to learn from each other. And you presented these three cases uh, in such a, a, a a short time, but so well. So thank you very much for your interventions. And I think what we can all already uh, sum up from, from this conversation is that information sharing, communication is key. And of course, it's good to have ad hoc uh, uh, checks and, and uh, uh, meetings and calls and so, but it's also good to have a system in place, processes in place to be ready to react on a timely manner, to be ready to be, to, to be responsive, but not only responsive and reactive, but also to prepare ahead for the future and what future uh, brings to us. So with this, I want to thank also our audience and invite Chiara for, for final words. Uh, and uh, yeah, Chiara, please. Just, uh, just to say that uh, we have many words uh, uh, for, uh, to foster our cooperation and the word of thanks to ENCA for co-organization of the webinar and to our three speakers for their excellent input. So that's all from my side. Thank you. And to the audience, thanks. And uh, uh, look uh, on our space because there is where we will post the uh, slides and the recording of this webinar. All the best and uh, see you at our other events. Bye-bye, have a good day. Thank you. Bye.